Today we're going to be using some clay. There's a whole bunch of online recipes for not clay itself, but um, like different versions of well, almost like a Play-Doh. Um, I, I might link a couple of them for you guys, but uh, they're they're pretty much all the same. If you don't have clay at home, um, which probably most of you don't, you can use like like flour and and salt and things like that. Um, you mix them all together. Make sure you follow the recipe. And um, once you've done that, then you end up with, with something that will eventually harden. It's moldable, and then if you leave it out to air dry, it should harden. So credit out to those that wrote me those emails. Uh, but I, I don't want to share names just to be on the safe side. So this is uh, a whole bunch of clay that I uh, ordered for the school. Um, when they said that we could come in during this COVID-19 and um, get what we needed, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe we'll do some clay projects. So here we are. What I don't have with me are any clay tools. Uh, because I kind of had, like I said, I, I had the idea that you would be able to... Um, make your own clay at home, uh, but I, I kind of figured that you probably wouldn't have any tools at home, and so I didn't bring any either. So as far as cutting these goes, we usually use a wire tool. I don't have a wire tool, um, so we'll have to, I don't know, use our hands or scissors or something else. So we've got our water. This ocarina that we're going to be making, you're going to need some popsicle sticks or something that is at least flat so if you don't have popsicle sticks you might um, use like a, a stick or a, a potentially like a thick piece of cardboard or something like that and what I'm going to end up doing is cutting off shoot that across my table here cutting off the ends of my popsicle sticks so that they are flat we're going to be making a pretty basic one in, in school we ask that you make an animal of some sort, or a mode of transportation, or we turn it into something. For this, to keep it short, uh, we're going to basically make the, the most simplified version possible. Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is knead your clay. We're going to call it clay even if you're not making clay. Kneading your clay is just the process of getting all the air bubbles out of your clay. Some people skip this step when we're in school, and then they regret it later because your air bubbles in your clay, when you go and put this in the kiln, will expand. It's kind of like blowing up a balloon. Um, and so with that warm air and the expansion, but your clay resisting that expansion, you end up with something that explodes and you get cracks, uh, sometimes an entire piece will, will blow off, um, all kinds of issues. If it's air drying because you've made your own recipe at home, I don't probably think you need to worry about it as much because it, it's not going to get to 2,000 degrees. Normally you'd want to use like a rolling pin maybe. Don't have a rolling pin though. Well, actually I do. I just don't want to use it on clay. So I'm using the palm of my hand. Apparently I'm getting some rings from the texture from this plate, but that's all right. What I'm doing here is flattening this to be like a cookie. So that's probably about a, I don't know, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch thickness. So like a pancake or a cookie. Um, you don't want it to be, I, I always say, thicker than your pinky. Um, otherwise, you risk um, issues of it not drying out in time, and then when you put it in the kiln, it would potentially explode. You also don't want it to be much thinner than a pencil, just because it'll get brittle, and uh, it's more likely to break that way, too. You can make things that are thicker than your pinky. You can make things that are thinner than a pencil. You just have to be more careful with them. You're going to either use your pinky or your thumb or whatever... Uh, works best for you if you've got fat hands like me try to use like your pinky and 
you're poking a hole in there so that you can pinch all the way around and that's why it's it's a pinch pot is because you're basically making a pot that you are pinching so I'm starting with my thumb and my finger on if I hold this up so you can see it my thumb is on the inside my fingers on the outside and my thumb I can I can kind of gauge how much distance there is you don't want there to be this thick of clay you don't want there to be super thin clay you want you know that that like one fourth of an inch like what our pancake is so you do have to kind of feel it and and figure it out for yourself um, once you've pinched that then you're gonna move down a little bit pinch all the way around move down a little bit more pinch all the way around down a little bit more and, and so on and so forth So here's my base, here's my bowl or my pot that I have pinched here, that's why it's called the pinch pot. You're going to put this on top of what you've made here. You just cut this um, and you can trace it so that it fits on here exactly. You could also try to widen this so that it fits onto the one that you've already made. Use a knife or um, you know something to cut it. So I'm going to use my scissors here. Not sure how well that's going to work, but I'm going to line this up using a pencil. I'm going to trace around the outside here. And I kind of put mine on the edge so that there's less cutting I have to do. So let's attempt to not destroy our scissors. Probably just got to wash those off when I'm done with this and then dry them because your scissors will rust you don't want rusty scissors okay so this is gonna go right on top like that and then you're gonna smooth this out now there are a lot of people who say that if you are using clay that is the same consistency so I just took this fresh out of the bag right here um, it's it's the same consistency I've only been working on it for maybe 10 or 15 minutes here then you can you can basically just blend this all together you don't need to score it I disagree with that statement um, yes sometimes it can work out um, but why take the risk uh, obviously this is a, a pretty short project so not a huge deal if something happens to it I can just make another one but if this is a project that you've spent uh, multiple class periods on over a, a course of a couple of weeks um, why risk it you know all your hard work and and then it ends up falling apart because you didn't take one more step to score your clay and apply some sort of slip to it so I'm gonna use a pencil um, you want it to be pointy so if you've got a pencil sharpener great if you don't um, ask mom or dad if they've got a, a knife and they can sharpen it for you and all I'm doing is cutting up the edges of my clay a lot of people do this too gently you don't want to obviously gouge your clay so that you destroy whatever you're making but you do want to be a little bit rough with it um, don't just like you know very very gently make these little lines on here because that doesn't do anything you have to um, you have to dig into your clay and what you're doing here is you're expanding the surface area so normally you've got your clay and it's flat like this but when it's all roughed up like this you're giving um, you know nooks and crannies and crevices where your clay can attach to the other piece that you have scored so you do have to score both sides I apologize if you can hear my cat whining in the background and once you've scored both sides then you want to apply slip now slip is uh, usually clay that's just been sitting in water so your water gets uh, very muddy looking and when it dries so the water evaporates the clay is what's left over and it helps hold your, your stuff together um, 
it can be very, very messy. And so we just use water. And if you are using some sort of homemade Play-Doh, there's a pretty good chance that uh, water is going to work just fine. You, you don't need to make some kind of concoction of flour and, and water and, and have it turn into a mess. Okay? So, a little bit of water around both edges and I'm going to connect these two together. So very gently I'm just pushing down on here and then you're going to smooth this out. going to be connected to this part. This one is hollow, this one is not. Um, what you might want to do is, if I turn this on its side, um, mine's kind of straight before it curves like this. Sometimes, depending on how you've made yours, it might start curving right away, in which case you might want to cut the back of this so that it matches that shape of your project here. So for me, Since mine is relatively straight, I am just cutting off the back side here so that it can match up like that. Okay, now we talked about wanting to score our clay. This is no different. Anytime that you are attaching one piece of clay to another piece of clay, always score it, no matter how small the piece is. Don't just stick it on there. If you take a piece of clay and you stick it on there and you say, look, it stays, and you you know shake it all over, the only reason that that is sticking on right now is because this piece of clay has water in it and this piece of clay has water in it. And since the both pieces of clay are wet, that's the part that, that holds it on. That's what makes it sticky. Once these both dry out, just bumping it very, very slightly is going to make it fall off. So, especially the younger grades, uh, just because it sticks doesn't mean that you've done it the right way. So, take the time, do it right the first time so you don't have to go back and start all over again. Scoring up my clay here. It's really not such thing as uh, too much scoring. I suppose if you scored like all the way through, that would be too much. Um, but for us, you want it to look something like that. And you can see um, little pieces of clay sticking out all over. So here's this one up close. And if I hold this at the correct angle for you, you can see all those little pieces of clay sticking up and those are what you want. So when you add your water, just a, a drop here, you're not trying to smooth out anything that you've done. You're just tapping it and it's going to take that um, water from your finger here and that water is going to be absorbed into all those little nooks and crannies that you've made. Okay, now because this clay is um, pretty wet already, I'm not going to add water to both sides. So what I'm going to do is I have water on this side, I'm going to connect these together. If you're doing this yourself, you should see little tiny air bubbles right around the outside here. That's all the air that is being squeezed out of your project when you push these pieces together. So very gently you are pushing these pieces together. <clears throat> okay. Um, Again, you can use your, your finger or whatever you have. I happen to have these popsicle sticks here, so uh, you know maybe instead of using my finger this time, I'll use popsicle sticks. And all you're doing is smoothing out your clay in different directions. It's kind of like putting a, 
a suction cup on a window. When you push it onto the window, that air gets squished out and it creates a vacuum. And that's what helps it stick. So that's what you're doing with your clay. If you've done it right, then, I mean, I don't recommend shaking this all over the place, but it, it should stay on. This next step is the, the main part of this project. This is what will make it make noise. I would recommend that you let this dry out just a little bit. Uh, maybe leave for a half hour and then come back. This is probably much too wet for the part that I'm about to do right now. But I'm going to attempt it anyway so I can get this video out to you guys without you having to um, wait any longer than you already have this week. Taking a popsicle stick, we are going to be poking it through the mouthpiece and into the body of our project here. Now, you have to remember how thick the bottom pancake was that you made because if you made it too thick, like, you know, if you made it something like this and you go to poke this through, then it's just going to be stuck in that clay. Um, you want this to come in and be just above the floor of your project that you made. So if mine's coming through the mouthpiece and I made mine about um, a quarter inch or so, if I make this dent on here, you can see uh, that's a about how thick the base of my project was. So this has to, you can't just poke this in at the bottom here. It's going to have to come in um, probably about right here. And then you're poking it all the way through. All right, so you'll be able to tell if you've, if you've done it right because once you break through this thick area of clay, you should find the air cavity that is in here and you should have less resistance on it. So I'm going to try to um, hold this the best I can without smushing the entire thing. This is very squishy clay right now. This is why I would recommend that you let yours dry a little bit first. So let's come in through the middle of the mouthpiece here. And you want to keep this, it's actually easier if you keep this down and you you try to keep your popsicle stick parallel to whatever surface you are working on. Um, because I'm trying to show you this process on the camera here, mine's obviously not going to be parallel. So I, I want to try to make this come in as even as possible. You don't want to come up at an angle. You don't want to be going down either. You want to try your best to go straight in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and right there, it just kind of slid in, um, so I'm, I'm meeting less resistance there. It does look like I maybe went in a little bit crooked, um, but it should work out okay. Now, because this clay is so um, wet, when I pull this out, it's going to want to pull this mouthpiece off. So this is why my hand is covering up everything that you see right now because I'm trying to prevent that from happening by pulling this popsicle stick out of there. Okay, so there you have a little slit for your popsicle stick. If you've done it right, it should go all the way in. Now, I do think that mine, although it was straight this way, I do think that Mine went in instead of straight like this. I think I had it going in a little bit crooked like this. And that's not something that we wanted. But it is what it is. So I'm going to leave it there. I guess it's not too bad. It, it feels a little weird though. Okay. So I'm putting this back in again to try to clear that airway. And next comes your second popsicle stick and you should have cut off the tip right there. What you're going to do is come in about the thickness of the bowl or the pinch pot that you made. So again, that was, I'll use a pencil here, <clears throat> that was about about that thick 
quarter of an inch or so. So that's how you know where to put this popsicle stick. You don't want to obviously be sticking it through that wall or else it's, it's just going to meet more clay. What you want to do is push this through and you're going straight in, straight down until you meet this popsicle stick here. Now you might want to hold this popsicle stick because you don't want to push on it and then have this popsicle stick bend upward because you're pushing down on this one. So again, I'm going to awkwardly hold this, put my thumb here to support this one, and I'm pushing all the way down until I feel this popsicle stick with the one that I, I just shoved in there. And once you've done that, you can wiggle this one back and forth a, a little bit. open up this little hole right here okay now um, I don't believe that you can see if I move my light here maybe I still don't think you can see in in real life you should be able to look into this hole right here and you should be able to see this popsicle stick all right so for you guys doing this in person you should be able to see that popsicle stick. I can see it, um, but on the camera, I, I do believe that that's too dark. So you'll have to just trust me that the popsicle stick is able to be seen there. Okay, now, uh, the number one thing that people do to make this not work um, is they don't keep this airway clean. So when I just pulled out this popsicle stick here, there's a little bit of clay stuck to the popsicle stick. There's also like this little piece of clay right here. All right, you want to <clears throat> be very careful about having extra bits of clay inside this area here. Same with right there. So what I'm gonna do is try to clean off that popsicle stick. I'm gonna put it back in there again. And what I need to do with this popsicle stick is put it back into here until it's meeting this other popsicle stick that we have. And you're going to pull it back at uh, about a 45 degree angle. So math time, for those of us who don't know, 45 degrees is half of 90. And 90 is basically an L shape. So if I hold this like this, the shape, this corner that my um, popsicle sticks are making, that's a 90. And what we want to do is pull this popsicle stick down about halfway. So if I'm looking at my screen here, I want to pull it back to about like that. That's going to give me that 45 degree angle, so half of an L. And it's tricky because you have to keep it smooth um, up against this popsicle stick. So let me just try to do this here and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm pulling down on it. I'm trying not to disrupt the top right here, the top of this hole. I'm trying to only squish down the back of that cavity that I made here. So I'm pulling down and using my finger to support this popsicle stick here, I'm trying to pull. You can see I got a little bit of clay there. I'm trying to pull back on Let's see if I can The nice thing about working with clay is if you do make a mistake on this part, which I have done before, you can always just take more clay and smush it back in here and start again. Okay? Um, the drier your project is, I think the easier this part is, but also the drier your project is, the less room you have to fix mistakes. So it's, it's kind of a, a trade-off. Let's see, now can you see if 
I hold my lamp in here, you can see, there you go, you can see the popsicle stick that is in there. And if I hold this at an angle, you can see the reed that I have created. The reed is the sloped part of the clay that is going down at that 45 degree angle. Because I can see that there is some clay inside this area and I'm going to try my best to clean that all out and see if it will um, make a note. Okay, so we'll see how long this takes. So we got it making noise. Um, once it makes noise, leave it alone. Um, especially if your clay is as humid as mine is, because um, your breath has humidity. And so the more you blow into it, the um, more you're going to get humidity on the reed inside of your um, ocarina. And, and you might distort it and then it, it won't make any noise. The difference between it making noise and not making noise is literally like fractions of a millimeter. Um, that reed usually has to be a little bit higher. If, you're, if it sounds windy, like you blow through it and it sounds like um, you're trying to whistle but you don't quite know how, then you want to lift that reed up a little bit. You put your tooth, uh, toothpick, you put your popsicle stick in there, and you lift it up just a little bit. Um, and and that's the difference between it sounding like you're spinning and sounding like uh, it's actually hitting a note. Okay, it should be it should be pretty clear. Also, the lighter that you blow into it, um, the more likely you are to hit that note. You don't want to just like you know as hard as you can. Um, or uh, again, you're going to wreck that reed that you've created. So I would let this dry out a little bit. Um, we're not going to follow my advice right now, though, because we're trying to get this all done in one video. So next is trying to make um, notes so that you can play, I don't know, hot cross buns or something like that. Um, the amount of notes that you can add or, um, or holes that you can put into here depends on how high yours is. Now this is already making a pretty high pitch sound so potentially putting um, even one hole in here could wreck this project. So we're gonna find out um, so that you can listen to the note that mine makes and if yours is higher than that you know to leave it alone. Alright so um, one more time mine is currently at that. All right, I'm not a music teacher. I don't know what note that is, but it's a note. So as far as putting a hole in here goes, um, if you have something that is 
Um, like a like a chopstick would be a good idea if you have chopsticks at home to poke that through. Something that's consistently um, the same size all the way around. So uh, the pencil is not a great idea because um, it starts off really small and it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but this is all I have right now, so this is what I'm going to use. Uh, so figure out where you want your fingers to be. It looks like maybe one on either side so like one here and one there um, and that's where I'm going to again this is wet clay so I have to be careful not to wreck anything so it's more like I'm using a drill in fact if, if mom or dad have a, a drill and a drill bit at home um, that would be a much better idea than what I am doing right now but I'm slowly twisting this And I think I have finally broken through to the inside. So let's see if it makes a note now. Okay, so it's higher. So here's low. Um, I don't know if it'll go higher than that or not. Let's try it. We're, we're going to wreck mine for science here. Um, let's try to put one more on this side. And you might say, well, Mr. Z, if you make one and you wreck it to the point where it doesn't make any notes anymore, can't you just fill that hole back in? I would think the answer is yes. It would make sense that if you make one too many holes, you can just fill one up. Um, but our experience in class has been the opposite. If you make too many holes and you patch it up, um, it just doesn't make any more noise. And I think that the reason for that is because when you are poking your pencil or something through your clay, this is why we, this is why I'm turning it slowly and trying to drill into my clay. Um, but what happens is when you make a hole in your clay like this you on the inside have made um, all of these um, little like stalagmites and stalactites that are on the inside of the cave inside of here um, and I, th I think that that's what disrupts the airflow and c keeps it from making a noise so even if you take a piece of clay and you fill this in so that on the outside it looks nice and smooth again you still have this, um, you know, thing sticking up, or in this case, sticking down into your your project, and I think that that is what causes the issue. So again, if you've got a drill um, with a drill bit, use that um, because the the drill bit will drill into there and it'll pull the clay out instead of smushing it in. Um, and that way, hopefully, if you make a mistake, you can just fill it back in again. Okay. Let's see if it still makes any noise at all. Ooh, that's surprising. Um, but it works still. So we now have I wouldn't go higher than that. I'm not gonna go higher than that. That's uh if you blow into yours and yours is close to that pitch, that height um, I would leave it alone I wouldn't put any holes into it but there you go there's the the higher and now it kind of looks like kind of looks like a face doesn't it I'm almost thinking with this coronavirus thing that I I should put like a piece of clay here and a piece of clay here so it looks like a you know a, a gas mask or something like that and and those could be the eyeballs or something um, before I poked a bunch of holes in here, or if I poked, if I was able to poke more in, I was thinking ladybug. I was going to put like an eyeball here, an eyeball here, have the holes be the black dots, and maybe make some little feet, um, something like that. Maybe little antennas coming off or something. But uh, to keep this video shorter, we're going to leave it alone. So one more time, here's that highest note. And... Uh, 
it's addicting. You, 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 you know, you made an instrument out of clay, and so it's it's fun to keep messing with that instrument. But you, there's a, a time and place where uh, you reach a certain point, you got to just leave it alone. Um, no more, no more blowing into this because what's going to happen is that that reed you can. You probably can't see on the camera, so I'm not even going to try to show you, but you can see the humidity building up from my breath on there. So I need to leave this alone, and uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.